be the same. So this meeting is being recorded to the Town of Amherst YouTube channel. It will be uploaded by our IT department. And I thank everyone for joining us. At this time, there's, there are not members of the public in the attendee room. I will make the chair the host of the meeting. And okay. I wish you all a great meeting. All right, thank you. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Shona, thank you for the list of names that you're gonna to refer to. Okay, uh, I'll read the thing. Um, pursuant to chapter 20 of the acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting can do so by clicking on the live link to this Zoom meeting that can be found on the public meetings calendar on the town of Amherst website or by dialing in by phone. The public is able to comment during the public comment segment of the posted agenda by raising their hand. This meeting is being recorded and will be posted to the town of Amherst YouTube channel. All right. And sorry ahead of time if I sound stuffy or sneeze incessantly because I've got really bad allergies today for some reason. All right, so let me, do we have any members of the public with raised hands? No, we do not. All right, so for chair report, um, I've talked to Kamal Peters about poetic dialogue. Um, he's, he's on the mend and he's working again. So he'll be doing it very soon. He was very distraught about the whole situation and he's an Amherst native. He's very anxious to get it fixed. Um, he just had to do like a couple quick things first because while he was out, you know, he's an independent artist. He was making no money. So he had to, just had to do a few things quick to make some money so that he could pay the rent. And, um, but we're like at the top of his queue for getting some stuff done, getting that point of dialogue back to normal. It's gonna require taking it down again and taking off the old rebar and then issuing new rebar and putting in, um, new holes into the rocks and putting it in well how much is that going to cost him i am he's absorbing the costs so i'm not i don't know how much it's going to cost him um aside from his time but like for materials i don't know mm. uh, but it's not going to cost us anything which is good news for us um uh, i mean it's bad news for him he he realizes he made the mistake and he's upset about it uh -huh. um yeah. but it does like turn it like our like i guess already the job was kind of like um not a very high paying one for him but he did it for his love for amherst and then like getting all the attacks and stuff made it just kind of like oh man come on he was just trying to do a good thing and he just he made a mistake, he made an honest mistake and he owns to his mistake and he realizes that, you know, it was totally his mistake. It's sad. It is sad, the whole thing is very sad. Cause he's a good, a good artist and he's standing by his work. He just had a, what he calls a, a brain fart. <laughs> but, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. He's not the first, he won't be the last. <laughs> I think you said that true thing. And then I guess the other thing I've got to say can go into other things. Okay. So we can move on to making it public. All right. Um, making it public. I've got a meeting. Let me look it up to, so I can tell you exactly what it is. If anyone else wants to join, maybe I can get um, another slot in. It's going to be on Wednesday, the 31st of August at three. It's going to be, um, Maureen Pollock is going to be hosting it. She's part of the planning board and she's gonna be kind of like the, the wheel that grinds through the project. 
and I'm going to be going to that meeting. There's other people in town that are going to be going to that meeting and other entities in the town. I'm not sure exactly who else all is going. I don't think Maureen entirely knows right now either. So that'll be determined by availability. Um, I've got a couple ideas. Do you guys have any ideas that we want to throw into the pot for uh, making it public ideas? I don't really know where it stands exactly. And so I don't know what the meeting that you're going to is focused on or anything like that. Yeah, I don't think there is a focus yet. I think that's like we're trying to, this is just like an initial brainstorm. Well, isn't it, uh, and, the, and the brainstorm is to how to benefit the town from being part of the making it public see thing that the state's done. Yeah. Okay. So um, I guess one thing I think is that I think that this commission needs to make some kind of big decisions about itself. Uh, given that it's being asked to be more involved in things. And like I've said a lot of times, if, if the money from the building projects truly materializes, the accountability of the commission is going to be at stake. Yeah. You mean us? Yeah. The commission okay. meaning us. You're the commission, yeah. Okay. And um, I, I, you know, everybody right now likes to talk about how um, the federal CDC leads by following, you know, and that's what this commission has to do in a way is decide to, do you want to, how much do you want to have policies and vision already uh, intact and ready to deliver as a group to entities like the planning board when you're asked to to do something and like i i sent you show shoshana some really short random samples of public commissions and art entities calling for public art within their communities of different sizes but yep. you can see by the language in it and by the targeted nature of a lot of it they have really specific things in mind and i i mean i i'm not saying we ha i have to do this but it seems like if the commission wants to feel that it's got a real voice in the mix we've got to have some some kind of vision like it can be real small you know but I, I have, I've been coming to the meetings now for almost a year, and I still feel like I don't know what's going on. I, I know that those utility boxes have been painted, and I think they're great. And I know that the park, Kendall Park, I guess it's called, had st stuff in it and then removed from it and maybe is coming back. It's the, um, the Frank Grinspoon yeah. stuff that, that yeah. it is there now. Oh, it is. Yeah. Yep. So anyway, there I feel I feel incompetent in terms of like, really, I can't brainstorm because I don't know where I'm supposed to be going. So, Dara, how would you accomplish making these big decisions and coming up with a voice? What steps would you take? Well, I think we're we as a group, that's what you do in a meeting. You talk about what if and and then you you don't try to settle on something right away, but you get ideas about how you can represent a broad responsible vision of art in a very sweet small community like Amherst. It's a great town for art. It's always loved it. It's got plenty, plenty things about it that uh, really like shows that it cares about it, you know, and so I remember um, in one meeting, Bill talked about how this commission was ignored when the planning committee did its report that we were sent and artists talked about a whole lot in the whatever document we were sent. But I don't know, I just don't know what, I, I actually don't know what I'm supposed to do. 
Well, I'm trying to figure out how you would propose to move from the abstract to the specific. Like, I don't have a problem agreeing with you on your abstract ideas, but then you have to move down to some very spe specific things. So give me an example of a specific, and then I'll know what territory I'm supposed to be in. Well, uh, specific would be, uh, we would like to see more uh, visual art in public spaces in Amherst, perhaps. We would like to promote more concerts on weekends, perhaps. That kind of thing, those are specific. So you can, if, so, you, okay. if you talk, on the abstract level, as I like to think too, but that doesn't, uh, you need to turn it into reality. It has to be, it has to be concrete, I think. Well, I think that's what I'm actually asking for is that as a commission, as a group, we mm -hmm. do some kind of talking about specifics and, and make a kind of cope, not, not strict, but coherent kind of pattern. Like you wanna cover all the arts. You, in your examples just now, you, you mentioned visual arts, you mentioned music. I, I know there's plenty to do with written things all over the place. I, it's like, so I understand that. And then, so what do we say? Do we say, oh, we want to put a call out for X. And you, you think about what is that going to include? Is it going to be like something for uh, people in, like for teenagers to do something special for art? Is it something, you know, there, there's so many categories you can break down into and I don't have a big preference or anything. I just wanted us to maybe talk about it at some point. Yeah, well, that's why I think we need to talk about what kind of projects we would want to bring forth in this meeting. So I've got three ideas so far for this, this um, making it public okay. project. Great. And I was just wondering if you guys, I was hoping that you guys would have some ideas too, or, or maybe you guys could help me develop my three ideas that I'm going to bring. Great. So can we hear your ideas? Yes, definitely. I just was um, wanting to hear your ideas first, if you guys had anything, but I've got three ideas. One is uh, realignment park. It's looking rather shabby and it's actually like a little piece of downtown Amherst that belongs to the Art Commission. And it's been gone to seed. It doesn't look good. Where is it? It's, um, do you know where like that metal cow is downtown? Yes. It's like yeah. kind of behind the metal cow, like, like the back end. Like if you were, if you were at the cow and you were walking like back into town from the cow, there's yeah, this yeah. little spot with like a little stone that says like realignment park art commission. That's, That's so ground. funny. I've never noticed that little sign and I walk by there a lot. Exactly. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. How much, have, what's your ballpark estimate of the space? Like 10 by 15 or 10 by 10, like. Yeah, maybe 10 by 10, maybe a little bit longer. I'm not really sure. I've never uh -huh. seen it like plotted on a map. Uh -huh. But like it's a there's a little space there and there's like some kind of like little wall that's got like like little bushes and stuff that are, have like wildly tried to start start up there. But there's no like there's no landscaping that's under control in that little spot. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah. So well, that's that's a good thing. That's like yeah. That seems that's, like a good thing to like, focus on. I feel on. like that's got a something. I felt like that for a while, but it's just never been a priority because it's not like splashy, I guess, or something. Okay, so why don't we all commit to going and looking at it before between now and the next meeting and trying to come up with some ideas of what might be installed there? Yeah, actually, if you could look at it before the 31st and then... Um, either call me, text me, or email me any ideas that you might have, because the 31st is that meeting. Yeah. Oh, okay. Do you have any ideas right now that you kind of have, have just speculated about for there now? I've, I could envision a few different things going on. I could see like, maybe like a, like a, 
bench to sit and, and write poetry or something with flowers around, or I could see like some sort of sculpture thing going in there. Yeah. I wonder, yeah, I, I, like the, I like that it's small. I think that's very cool to have a real small, small thing to work on, you know? Can I just make a point, please? Yeah. Yeah. Send them to Ellen, but do not send copies to anyone else or discuss them because, well, you could discuss them if you only send them to Ellen. But if you send them to a quorum of the committee, it will possibly have violated open meeting law, especially if you discuss them. Okay. But anyway. Uh, oh, okay. So in fact, Jim, you were telling me in a way that we can't discuss things except in an open meeting. Well, we can right now because we don't have a quorum. Oh, we're not even having a meeting right now? No, it's not a legal meeting. We don't have a quorum. Oh, okay. According to Angela, she says a quorum is the majority of your total allotted members. And we only have four members out of seven. So unless we get everybody here, we don't have a quorum, according to her. I don't doubt her, but being a lawyer, I'm gonna check. <laughs> I don't think everybody has to be somewhere to make a quorum. That's, otherwise, the word quorum means nothing. Well, quorum, her, her definition of quorum is a majority of the people who could be appointed, which is seven. The people who oh, have been be. appointed is four. I see, could be. I, I think a quorum makes more sense if it's the number of people who are sitting and active. Right. But um, she cited open meeting law, and I'll go check. Okay. Because <laughs> I don't like the answer, so I'm going to say, <laughs> if I like the answer, I just keep my mouth shut. Right, right. Yeah, which means we can't actually vote on mi uh, minutes today. <laughs> nope. Oh, no, really? You found those <laughs> minutes. You got those minutes that you asked. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Good. I mean, she, I mean, she knows what she's doing, so the chances are very high that she's right. I just, you know, want to acknowledge that. Well, the if she's, from what she said, then there will potentially be more members by the next time we meet. Yeah, that would solve the problem another way. Yeah, I would really like that. Yeah, that'd it's be like, great. It's just too much for, you know, three, sometimes four of us. Ellen's it doesn't been make any busy. sense. And, and there's so many more kinds of representation that can go on, too, right. you know? Anyway, I like the I like the idea of a sculpture in that space. I I don't favor a bench that you can write poetry on because I think people will sit on it and not write poetry. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have a lot of benches anyway, and that's okay. I mean, I think sculpture is always kind of great because yep. it's it's it is more abstract to use the word you were taught using earlier. And it allows people to have really very immediate involvement with see, seeing what they see, you know, and saying something about it. And that's good. Yep. So I think we should probably get some kind of focus on something we can manage, like let's promote sculpture in various places. Let's, let's pick something that we can deal with and try to get that promoted. But I'm interested in the other two ideas that Shona has. Oh, the, and uh, well, one is my pie in the sky event that I've been dreaming about for years of um, having like on Indigenous Peoples Weekend, have like when all the foliage is in full effect, having a hike on the Robert Frost Trail event where there's like different spots along the trail where there's different art going on. Like there'll be some dance, there'll be some poetry readings, there'll be some music. And uh, am I forgetting anything? Maybe some plein air art painting, you know, and like people could walk through, you know, a, a stretch of the Robert Frost Trail and experience all these different kinds of art while they're also enjoying the foliage. And I have a alternate idea with this of having it on the rail trail so that it would be um, accessible to the disabled too, mm -hmm. which seems like it would be a little more um, grant worthy if it was right. accessible. No, that's good. 
Okay, so I think if we do something like that, somehow it ought to tie into generating um, support for art. And in particular, probably us, but only because we're charged with supporting art. Yeah, well, I think the way it would support art is that we would pay the artists that would be at the different stations. Along yeah, the but I'm thinking about something continuing or something having lasting impact because okay. I believe we've discussing that we don't have much impact, which I certainly agree with. Yeah. So my thought is that the next year might be devoted to trying to figure out how we could have a lasting impact and then build on that the next year with specific projects. So, so my, I'm, my argument is that everything we do this year should have some salutary effect on our continuing impact on the town. And how do we achieve this, do you think? Well, let's see, let me think about this. So we have the rail trail idea. I'm like, we're going to have music and art. Okay, so how do you make that last? Um, could you get like people to sign up for, so we had the mailing list that we could start mailing information to people about art, perhaps? We could do that. Yeah, so right now we don't have any, you know, we can't send out an email to get support about anything because we don't know who's interested in art. But if we started got getting that information, that would be the basis for being more effective because we'd have the email list that we could send out. Hey, this got concert or hey, have you seen the new sculpture sculpture that went up or et cetera. And here's, a, here's a, what we're doing. Here's a monthly report, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So, is there, does somebody have a connection that's real friendly and positive with the Amherst Bulletin people who report on the arts? No. Probably my <laughs> I, I wife does. I, I used to, but I don't any longer. I bet my wife does because she seems to have that with everybody. <laughs> that's good. Because mm -hmm. I think that's one thing that like if it's not as if the Amherst Bulletin isn't looking for news. And if you feed them enough news and on a regular basis, they're gonna they're gonna pay more attention to what you're doing than if they don't have anything at all, you know. Right. Like, give them a, go ahead. Well, give them a newsworthy event. Yeah, that would be good. Yeah. Well, I'm just picking up on what you're saying. Well, like, how about um somebody how about them reporting on fixing the, the dialogue oh what a good idea after it's done <laughs> it's the story yes it is <laughs> uh, did you read the story um of the poetic dialogue from like two weeks ago oh no oh. Well, oh, uh, yeah <laughs> yeah we were in the newspaper we were quoted from our meeting just like it is right now uh-huh well, was it, was it a positive article? Not particularly, no. It was in the, what's that one that comes in the, in the mail now? The reminder? Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know its name, but I know what you mean. Oh, yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, it was in the reminder a couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if we did something like that, then we can send out the news release or the article, we could clip it and send it out to our mailing list. Yeah, well, and and back to the dialogue again, because I do have vested interest in it of some kind. Um, I, that was a very positive thing. It, there were a lot of people, there were a lot of different kinds of people involved in it, and it wasn't reported. Right. I mean, okay, I was so surprised. What I'm hearing is, what I'm Wait, hearing is, is to, to achieve our vision that you're suggesting that we need to make sure we have better press relations so we can have better coverage of what we do. Yeah. I wish I knew somebody who, you know, has that beat for the bulletin in particular, more than a bigger paper. I mean, I feel like the Amherst Bulletin is the right place. You the know? bigger paper being what? 
the Hampshire Gazette. Okay. I mean, isn't the Amherst Bulletin owned by the Hampshire Gazette and sort of a part of it? I don't know. Yeah. 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 So yeah, and the reminder is separate. Yeah. A yeah. reminder is like a uh, ad. A, a, yeah. But Steve Farrar publishes stuff about art sometimes. I mean, he, you know, when I when I published my book, he did a write up on it. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you can get stuff in the Gazette. Oh, I think that's good about it. I just think that since it's the Amherst Bulletin, it's nice that that's yeah. a focus, you know? Well, I, I like yeah. both. Yeah, both are great. <laughs> yeah, that's why I think big. I think uh, big and, and then go to small. Mass Live too, you know? Yeah, well, think big and accept small. <laughs> right. No, no, that's good. I like the, to go back to the little spot by Beyond the Cow. Um, Say say the name of it again. Realignment Park. Why is it called Realignment? That's such I don't a know, but name. maybe a change of name would help too. <laughs> Realignment. Oh yeah, that so is big. <laughs> right. It sounds like it should be acreage. You know. Yeah. And it's not really a park. No, it's not. It's a little patch. <laughs> oh, I'd love to know the history of it. It's kind of cool sounding, you know. <laughs> I, I could picture a little, some kind of wonderful little miniature world going on in there, you know? Yeah. I like that because the microcosm idea is kind of nice to think about in miniature stuff, you know? Yeah. But I think what we need to do is figure out like five different things and then implement them. Yeah, that's a good idea. Well, and the pro, there's a, slight problematic thing about a sculpture there is that there's the cow that's like it's so close it's so it has no, to be something no. that like wouldn't get overshadowed by the cow <laughs> <laughs> that, i could picture sending out a note to like uh amherst area emerging artists we need a piece of proposals for sculpture to fit within a 10 by 10 space that is near a statue of a cow and we <laughs> don't want it to be overshadowed by the cow <laughs> yeah so think bright garish colors <laughs> so real specific <laughs> or it could also be well maybe not i was going to think if you had a place where you had period you know they used to have uh photographs shows that were in the town hall and so every so often they would change to a different photographer which I know about because I'm in two photo clubs and you know the clubs were all interested in that. So if there was a way to do an outside exhibit where you could protect photographs from the weather, that's another thing for a 10 by 10 square, you could have a small photographic exhibit there. That's probably pretty expensive, huh? To have to, something that's weatherproof for protecting photographs. I don't know. I'm just thinking of a glass case with was sealed against the weather with a with a glass door that opened on a hinge. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if that's you know a good way to to show photographs. But my idea is, I get I you know if you want to be creative, get a bunch of ideas and then you start to evaluate. Yeah, them. absolutely. Because if you evaluate your ideas while you get them, you won't get them. <laughs> I was I drove up to Middlebury, Vermont this week to to for work and a little town called Brandon had every utility pole with a banner on it of a portrait of their high school graduating class. Oh. It was oh. wild. It was like I I kept thinking, I wonder how these kids feel about this. Well, they probably love it. Is this well, who knows? Not, maybe not all of them. And, and then I was thinking, was this one photographer or was this many photographers? Or, and it was kind of a, I was, it was shocking. Were these high but, school students? Yeah. It was I, their high know, school teach, graduating class. I, I coach high school students and, and, and I think they probably like that a lot. Well, I, I'm sure many of them do. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I was, that was a, I guess that would be called public art. 
that's public art. I mean, it can be marketed as such, and I think it is. I mean, especially if the pictures are taken by non-professional photographers. Well, and it's not, it, they're certainly not um, protected from the weather. They're just banners on utility poles, you know, like flags. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what would happen to them. Uh, I think they're not meant to stay up forever because they ha you have a new graduating class every year. That's true. So, or even maybe not beyond the summer. I don't, I don't know what, I don't know anything about what I'm talking about, except I drove through this town. Is this Brandon <laughs> what, New Hampshire, did you say? Brandon, yeah, it's Vermont. Vermont, so we can find out from Brandon, Vermont. Well, I don't, I'm not proposing that we do that. <laughs> I well, I'm just trying to get a bunch of ideas without evaluating yeah. them. Yeah, I think public, I, one of the things about public art that I love is that it's, it sort of is supposed to be advertising itself by being in a place to be seen. Well, maybe outside for, of a museum, outside, you know, it's not like so controlled. Well, you don't have, yeah. I think for the first year, maybe it needs a little help. <laughs> oh, of course. <laughs> and then after oh. it gets, you know, after it gets a reputation, like this is a spot to go to because it's cool, has art there, then it gets self yeah. publicizing. But at first it needs to. Yeah, I saw a great piece of public art advertised in the uh, someplace online. That's uh, the Canal District in, Holy, in Holyoke. There's a new giant oh. mural of a moose. Oh, it's beautiful and it's so wonderful. I'm I'm a big fan of giant animals in urban scenes because it's like they're taking over again, you know. Well, so I, I like them. A giant but moose. This would one fit, looks so good. Giant moose yeah. would fit really nice in a ten foot square area. <laughs> No, no, I'm not. No, I'm not thinking about that right now. Although I remember there was an idea that um, Gabrielle Gould had when she first started being the um, at the BID, which I thought was a great idea, but it wound up um, getting canceled. But we could resurrect the idea of um, a community-based mural where. You hire an artist to like map it out and plan it all out. And then it turns into essentially a paint by numbers. And then yeah. the community people come in and everybody gets to, you know, every paint as much or as little as they want. Right. And I participated in something kind of like that down in Springfield over the weekend. And it was a lot of fun. It was well attended. And um, it, yeah. it was really cool. Well, yeah, see, now that gets a whole bunch of people interested, and then you grab their contact information when they show up, and you start building a mailing list. Yeah, I'll add that to my list of things to bring to the brainstorm, I think. Yeah, I kind of like that one because of the yeah. number of people. You know, the more people you get involved in art, the more political support you get. It's a great idea to have people enlisted in finishing the, the product, you know? Yeah. yeah, that's good. I love yeah. it. That's really good. You could start with a so semi-modest example of that and then get bigger, you know? Yeah. Yeah, because in a way that's like one thing I think about the utility boxes being so good. There's the variety is really great. Yeah. It's kind of surprising, some of them. You know, some of them are curious and I like that project. I thought that I really like it a lot. You know, here's another idea. I don't think they, they it's anywhere it says conspicuously that this was brought to you by the Amherst Public Art Commission. Nope. Well, why don't we change that? Why don't we get plaques and put up beside these nice pieces of art? This, this, this artwork was brought by artist x was brought to you by the amherst public art commission just to start building political support that you should yeah. definitely do that yeah and i think like when we have events too we should have like those little lawn signs that say amherst public art commission and i also think we should get a logo i think having a logo would help make our identity stronger uh -huh. so that we're recognizable in town. And those, 
there's nothing now, right? There's Except nothing now. We've we we've talked about it in the past, but it's kind of fizzled out. We had some ideas, but they were all very weak. They're all just kind of like ways of writing Amherst Public Art Commission in different fonts, really, is what it was. But we need okay. something that's actually like a logo. You need it. Like for the Public Shade Tree Committee, we've got this thing that's like an arc with like a, like a kind of like a block print of um, tree branches. How many other entities that belong to the town have their own logos? And how, can I go to the town website and probably see them all? I don't know that I haven't checked, you know, how many others do. I just know because of the Amherst um, Public Shade Tree Committee, because I'm on it, and that we do have that identity. Uh -huh. Well, how about the other public art commissions? How about those? They, do they have logos? Yes. Yeah, yeah, we've looked at other public art commissions. There are some good ones out there. Well, there were some weak that. ones too. I mean, you'd okay, imagine that an art commission should have a good art logo. Yeah. Well, let's get yeah. some samples at the next meeting, go through them, and let's do this one. Yeah, I think I think we need to rise this back up onto the uh the table. Can you good. put this that's on the agenda for the please put yeah. it on the agenda for the next meeting? See, that's yeah. like having a signature. And yeah. That's good. And then that goes along with what Jim was talking about, about saying always acknowledging that the commission is responsible for this piece of art that you're seeing. Yep. That's a good thing. They go together. Yeah, we need a logo. Yeah. Yep. OK, so then, then I can help you. That. I can help you trademark it. There are plenty of okay. designers in, in this whole area. Yep. But if we get it, we should definitely trademark it. That will happen. Yeah, it's not that hard. No. So um, do you want to consider putting a call out for area artists and designers to to do it propose you know or how it worded so that it's not necessarily going to happen but that it might well, let's, yeah i, think I would we say should. we'd have to decide on how much we're going to spend on that and that would be okay. a vote and we can't vote right today yeah okay but, and just it, so it, how it, do we do how do you decide that we'd have to have a vote we have to have a quorum is this part of the public art stuff that in, it, a first step would be creating a public identity for the commission so that it can show, like have, have a, a stronger presence in the community? I don't understand the question. Yeah, I don't the, understand. What I'm saying is that before we put the call out, we need to know how much we're gonna pay for uh, yeah. the logo. So, and be, we can't decide that until we have a vote on that because no, that's no, actually my, spending money that would be a, a serious thing that we really do need to vote on my, my question was is the meeting you're going to at the end of august okay uh, is any of the money associated with that available for something like this or is this i don't not? think so i think i actually asked that and they said no but i can ask again and I'm if they, and if they said no why it would be good to know just to know yeah i think well, okay. it's supposed to be like event specific or something like that but um i'll ask again okay it's like i think i remember asking that question because it is like i don't know like the logo idea was my idea a couple of years ago and it's been like something that i think that we really really needed yeah Okay, when we get samples of these logos from the other public art commissions, can we find out how much they paid for it? Wanna just get online and go to little towns that you are interested in and think might have art friendly things going on and start doing that research and you'll find something probably. Yeah, well, we need to know how much they paid for it because that's how we know how much we should pay for it. Yeah, that's true. All right, could we all look into um, finding one town that's kind of comparable to Amherst and go idea. and ask them how much they paid for their logo that's or good. how they did it? Okay. Yep. Do you want to suggest towns or you want us just to get a try to figure it out? We can. 
Yeah, I would say let's just try and figure out because I don't have any on my mind just okay. now that would be comparable. Okay. So get in, in town, get their logo, and then try to find out how much they paid for it. Right. That's what the yeah. I would say um, once you like claim a town, um, send an email out so that we're not all like doing the same town. <laughs> yep. And you want them to be Massachusetts towns, maybe Western Massachusetts towns. I don't think it necessarily has to be. Okay. No, okay. I don't if, think so. Just like a, if they have a cool logo and okay. they're a comparable town, like not a big city, a big city probably has like a big budget for this kind of thing. Yeah. So okay. So they're going to have a completely different number. When you send the email identifying the town, don't discuss what you're doing. Just send the email saying, I pick X. Okay. Because otherwise you violate the open mean law. And it's a pain in the neck. <laughs> so the the NEFA is the group that is sponsoring your meeting that you're going to at the end of the month. Is that right? New England Foundation for the Arts. I I can't remember actually. Is that what I sent you? I think so. And I think that, the, I mean, for us, the part that was interesting is that it says in its ad to the public, artists in Massachusetts, this means there may be nine calls for temporary public art in mm. the respective communities listed above opening in the latter half of 2022. Mm. So Amherst is one of those towns. Right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, um, um, yeah, it is. Yeah. And so somebody is out there telling people to be look on the lookout for something that might happen. So that's, I mean, that's exciting. Yeah. Where's yeah. the New England Foundation for the Arts based? Boston? Probably Boston, because whenever people talk about it, they, they say Boston. Yeah. Like oh. they actually just call it Boston. Like, <laughs> uh huh. I, I mean, I, yeah, I guess it was Boston. All right. All right. Okay. And my third idea was um, sponsoring some, like, there's already salsa dancing in the area but I was thinking of it would be cool to like take that successful um community and event and like groundswell up to be even like more prominent and successful and bigger I'm not sure I understand what you're saying there's a um there's a group they go by salsa con tacos and yeah. they've been having some salsa dancing in Kendrick Park. And then they also have salsa dancing at Mexicalito um, Taco Bar. And I was thinking it would be cool to um, get that group and get a um, like a live salsa band and have like a really, really cool like event celebration, salsa in the park, dance in the park sort of thing. Because um, Northampton has had ones like that and they're very successful they bring in a lot of people people travel from like an hour away to go to this thing mm -hmm. so there's a built-in there's like a, a built-in like user membership i guess you could say or something like the community enjoys this and they're willing to travel for it and i like the idea of bringing people into amherst because when they're you know when they come into amherst they realize amherst is fun they're going to like go out to eat they're going to do stuff they're going to hang out oh yeah yeah but you would like that yeah and then we could like again that's an opportunity to develop a mailing list yeah true and it's also a way there's not a whole lot of um, events in Amherst that celebrate um, Latino culture. Oh, 
yeah. you know? And I feel like that's a, a good way to be more inclusive for, I think 7.3 of the population is Hispanic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so, okay. So how does that fit into our goal of establishing a program that would promote the arts in the community and in specifically the Public Art Commission's ability to promote the arts? We'd have our identity on that event. Okay, so you're saying it would get us publicity that would provide us some support in the future, probably. Yeah. Well, I think, I think we'd have our logo there, right? <laughs> well, I think if we do it, we should actually concentrate then on making sure that people know that it was sponsored by us because, right. because we are kind of like who? <laughs> yeah. You say, I'm on the Public Art Commission and who? That's right. That's why we really need a logo. We could have our logo printed on some signs and maybe yeah. even a banner to place at any any sort of event that we put our stamp on. Yep. And we could like that will get you an article in the Hampshire Gazette, probably, if you tell them in advance and write it for them. I mean, I don't know if they do that. I know that when I was with Common Cause, we wrote, you know, you would write a press release and send it out. And if the newspaper person got it and was, they might borrow liberally from the wording, which was great and made their life easier. So you're more likely to publish it. I don't know if that's the feeling around here or not, but I know it happens some in some places. I think so. I think press releases are supposed to insinuate what the organization right. wants to have said about them. Yeah, you write it as if it was a newspaper article so it can get borrowed from. Yeah. If they well, want. Sir, now I understand what you're going to do at that meeting, Shoshana. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and that's good. And that seems all good stuff. You know, yeah. the, the art trail thing, the frost walk, the walk, uh, the art walk trail thing is a great idea yep. and, and takes a whole lot of planning and work. Yep. Definitely, yeah. you know, but maybe it could be done in pieces and then the pieces could be fit together. If, the, yep. if ahead of time it was planned by us really well, only one person would have to do part of it. And another person would do another part of it, you know, but we'd have it, you know, pieces yep. could fit together and then it wouldn't seem overwhelming. Yeah. Yeah. Like if we had a full membership, you know, because this would be next year, this would happen. Um, mm -hmm. We could have, you know, each member have be in charge of hiring a different act to be in a different spot mm -hmm. along the That's trail. Right. That's right. You know, yeah, that each person would be doing separate things, and that'd be great. Yeah. So, and so long as the whole commission knows what's going on, and and can speak for the whole commission as being part of it. Yeah. Well, we would. You, know, you, you got to have that. our meetings. Yeah. Yeah. And probably make a pamphlet, you know, to go like a program kind of. Yeah. That would be, it would be great helpful. to have a logo to put on the front of the list. Yes. <laughs> well, and programs are really helpful when you're organizing something because it helps you see what you have to do. True. You know, so that's helpful. Anyway, well, this is all good. Thank you all so much. I'm going to have to go because I have another meeting. Okay. Is that okay? Is, is, there, is there something I'm going to... Well, well, we don't have a quorum anyway, so... Yeah, I was going to say your absence is not going to break the quorum. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well i just i got i gotta go get ready for this other meeting all right so, well thank you thank you thank too you. i'll look forward to our next meeting and see what happens at your meeting yeah we'll have to schedule our next meeting um we'll do that over email okay that sounds great i'm gonna okay. say bye bye bye
Just us. Yeah, I guess um, the only other thing that I would really like to mention um, is the town hall gallery. Um, I've taken down um, Bella Halstead stuff and put up um, Rachel the Fleur's stuff. Wait a minute, can, oh, is that on my? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So that's the list of names that I gave you. Got it. And I actually still have Bella Halstead's art because when I took it down, it was understood, like it was the plan earlier that I would just bring it to her apartment at the Arbors. Yep. So I took it down, I brought it to the Arbors and they said, she doesn't live there anymore. Ooh. And so then I called her and it went to her voicemail, but then her voicemail is full. And then, so I couldn't leave a message. So I just waited for her to call. She did eventually call me, but she called me on accident and she was really, really busy. And I said, I've got your, I've got your stuff. Um, I need to bring it to you. Call me back. And she has not called me back. So I still have her art. Okay. So what's her name again, please? Um, Bella Halstead. Okay. I'll find it. Yeah. Maybe uh, I'll, let me see if I can find her address. I'm not saying I can. Okay. But I might be able to. What is, is she a photo? I'm sorry, I didn't say the exhibit. Is she an artist, photographer, what? Um, she's uh, does oil paints. Oh, okay. Oh, cool. And pastels, she also does pastels. Okay. Okay, so I'm saying try to get, find her address. You know, maybe at the DMV or something like that. She doesn't drive. Won't be there then. <laughs> well, have you tried just doing a Google search? I have Googled her for the correct spelling of her name and it's articles about her art from the past. Halstead. Bella, so yeah, I'm getting a Sarah. It's, Here's an article, a biography of a Bella Jane. Oh no, wrong. Okay, it's not gonna be easy. I'll keep working on it. All right. But yeah, so I, I'm really wanting to get her her art back. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's really weird. She doesn't seem to be really in a hurry to get it, does she? Oh, so yeah. oh, she she was where? She was at the Arbors. Well, maybe they'll give us a forwarding address. I'll, I, maybe I'll just call our Arbors and tell them what we're looking for and see if they've got a current address. Okay, that would be good. Yeah, if they'll give it to us, it'd be easy. <laughs> and geez, I guess that's it. Check one more time on our agenda. Okay. Social media. Yeah, I've been working on our social media. Putting mostly I've been putting like call for artists or grant opportunities. Okay. And yeah. All right. So do you have anything else? Nope. All right. I call to adjourn. Uh, well, I would move and I would move to do it, but considering there's no quorum, why don't we just agree to by unanimous consent? We're adjourning. How's that? All right, all right. by unanimous consent at twelve fifty eight. We're adjourning. Okay. Adjourned by unanimous consent at twelve fifty eight. <laughs>
Okay. All right, and then we'll do emails to figure out the next meeting. All right. Or you can do Doodle. Doodle. Okay. Yeah, email you know that's you. that. It's it's easy to use, and it works so much easier than fifteen rounds of e emails. <laughs> All right. Let's. I'll do Doodle. Okay. I'll, I've never made one, so here's my chance. <laughs> oh, oh, if you have any problem, give me a ring. It's easy. I just did one. Okay. Yeah, right, you don't well, have to put the time in particularly. I mean, we know what the time is, so you just put it in all day. You just click the all day thingy and tell us it's going to be at noon. Okay. So that saves a lot of work. Yes, it does. All right. Well, hopefully next time I see you, that we'll have a whole bunch of faces in the thing and the, a whole bunch of squares from all the new members we're going to have. That would be great. That would be great. Yep. All right. Bye. Bye.